From Memphis, Tennessee, in celebration of the formal opening of Kraft's new branch and distribution center here, the Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Wednesday, January 8th, 1947. Exactly one week ago, Gildersleeve turned over a new leaf. So this must be the new Gildersleeve we see today. But as he sits there at his desk in the water department with his feet on the blotter and his chair tilted back, paring his nails, it's hard to tell him from the old Gildersleeve. Yes, Bessie? Judge Hooker calling. Yeah, put him on. The old goat, what does he want? Hello? Hello. Gildersleeve. Well, what's new, Gildy? What do you know? Look, I haven't got time for any small talk, Judge. I'm a busy man. If you want something, state your business. I had a letter from an old friend of yours today, Gildy. A lady friend. Oh, you did. Look, Judge, my time is not my own. I can't sit here gabbing all... Who is it from? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. When you come to your senses, call me back. Hello, hello. You still there, Judge? I wouldn't hang up if I were you, Gildy. You might be missing something. Listen, I'm not interested in hearing any gossip, particularly if it concerns a friend of mine. What about her? Coming to town. Arrives this afternoon, in fact. Who? Who's coming to town? A certain Mrs. Culpepper. I don't know any Mrs. It's Leela, you ninny. Leela Ransom. Leela. Oh. What's the matter with me? Must be my heart. Gosh. Well, aren't you going to say anything? It seems Leela and her new husband, the doctor, that is, are on their way to a medical convention in Chicago. She's stopping off here for a couple of days while he goes on ahead. Wants to see about selling a house. I've got a prospect for her. I expect we'll close the deal while she's here. Just thought that you'd like to know she's coming, old man. Leela, coming here. Certainly, I'm okay. Uh, guess I'd better go in here. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mr. Gillerstein. <laughs> what can I do for you? I don't know, Peavy. Do you mind if I sit down for a minute? Yeah, not at all. Those stools were placed there for the convenience of our customers. Uh, thanks, Peavy. I, I've been walking for hours. Nice day, isn't it? I say it's a nice day. It, it would be if those clouds would go away. Looks like there's still a chance the sun might break through. On the other hand, it might... 
why not? <laughs> uh, you can't expect good weather this time of the year. I wouldn't be surprised with rain before nightfall. Peavy, could I have a glass of water? Water? Certainly. What am I stirring it for? <laughs> there, there you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. And no charge. Uh, thanks. Yeah, she's going to drink it. Phoebe, if a man falls in love with a woman, only he doesn't know it, and she goes off and marries somebody else, and then he finds out he was in love with her the whole time, only it's too late, only he's still in love with her. Is that wrong? It's what's wrong? The whole thing. Can a man be blamed for something he can't help? What man? Nobody you know, Peavy. He, he's a friend of mine. Oh, oh, oh. You see, this friend of mine, well, it's quite a tragic situation, Peavy. It seems this friend of mine is in love with this girl. Oh, well, she's not a girl, exactly. She's married now, and all of a sudden he finds he's in love with her. Has been all along, I guess. This friend, I mean. What do you think he should do about it? Well, I'm telling you, he'd better forget it. But he can't forget it. It preys on him. It haunts him night and day. It's always in his thoughts, every minute. What do you think he should do? Take up a hobby. That's no solution, Peavy. You don't understand. This girl is coming to town. My friend is liable to run into her. Mrs. Ransom coming to town? Who said anything about Mrs. Ransom? This has nothing whatever to do with Mrs. Ransom. This is uh, two other people. <laughs> My mistake. Uh... What did you want of me, Mr. Gildersleeve? I don't know. I just say it's a problem, that's all. Yes, it is. Maybe the only thing to do is jump in the river. My friend, I mean. Yeah, maybe there's no hope for him. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Goodbye, Peavy. M Mr. Gildersleeve, where are you? Uh... Dear me, I hope he isn't going to... Oh, no, no, Mr. Gildersleeve is too sensible a man. Uh, I wouldn't say that either. <laughs> faster. Faster. Where am I going? Am I trying to run away? You can't run away from your own heart, Throckmorton Gildersleeve. I don't have to run away. She can't chase me out of this town. I've got as much right in the summer field as she has. I'm not afraid of her. By George, I'll go back and face the music. You're home. Hi. Yeah, a brilliant observation, Leroy. You should have been here, Ron. Piggy and me had a snowball fight. We almost beamed Judge Hooker. I didn't mean to. I was ducking down behind the fort, hiding, see? And I heard these footsteps. Lucky thing I looked before I let him have it. Mrs. Ransom was with him. Mrs. Ransom? Yeah, she's in town, didn't you know? Mrs. Ransom came here? No, they were on their way to her house. I guess they're still over there. Oh, she's avoiding me, eh? Very well. That's the way she wants it. That's the way it's to be. I'll avoid her, too. Perhaps it's all for the best. Who's avoiding anybody? You weren't home. I don't get it. Hey, where's the evening paper? Did you uh, talk to her, Leroy? Talk to who? Mrs. Ransom. I said hello. What did she say? Oh, I don't remember. Nothing particular. Uh, did she see you? Sure, she said hello. Oh, she didn't say anything else. Nah. Hey, what happened to the paper, Dad? Come here, young man. Gosh, what's the matter? Uh, about your conversation with Mrs. Ransom, Leroy, try to remember. Did she say anything about me? I don't think so. Heck, we only said hello, and then she went right on. I guess she probably said a few things like how much I'd grown and how's my uncle and all that kind of stuff. Conversation. She asked about me? Yeah, she asked how you were. She cares. <laughs> I don't get it. Hey, where's the paper anyway? Maybe nobody brought it in. She doesn't dare to see me. That's it. She doesn't dare. The paper was out there. Uh, Mrs. Ransom's just leaving, Unc, if you want to say hello. If you run out, you can catch her. What do I want to say hello for? I can do that any time. Where's my hat? Where's my overcoat? Where are you going? Never mind. Well, what did I tell Bertie? Did I I'm something? just going downtown for a minute. Well, Gilday. Trockmore. Hello, I didn't see you. I was going downtown. <laughs> well, it's 
It's certainly nice to see you, Throckmorton. It's nice to see you. You look just the same. So do you. You look just the same. Mm -hmm. Lila and I have just been checking the house. You going downtown, you say, Gilday? Me? Why should I go downtown? It's supper time. You look just the same, Leela. You haven't changed a bit. No, I'm just the same. Mm. Uh, how's your uh, husband? Oh, he's just fine. I'm going to meet him in Chicago day after tomorrow. Uh, that's fine. I don't know whether I mentioned this, Leela, but I thought since you're staying tomorrow, it'd be nice for you to see a few of your old friends. Oh, well, Horace, I didn't want you to go to a lot of... Just a few people, Leela. They're coming for tea tomorrow afternoon. It's all arranged. You'll come, I trust, Throckmorton? No. What? You heard me. I'm sorry you won't be there, Throckmorton. I can't help it. I have an engagement. Oh. An engagement I can't possibly break. Uh, Well, nice to have seen you, Leela. Thank you. Give my regards to your husband. So long. So long, Judge. Bye. Bye. Why did you do that, you fool? You only sleeve, you're a nincompoop. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back very shortly. Mr. Lang, I wonder if you'd like to hear the comments of new customers for Parquet Margarine. Well, he certainly would. Well, this is from a letter Mother wrote me after she and Dad had been introduced to Parquet while visiting me over the holidays. Quote, your New Year's Day dinner was simply delicious, Dorothy, especially the pinwheel rolls. And by the way, I intended to ask you for the name of that delicious margarine you served. It tasted so good on those hot rolls. I want especially to get some because your father liked it as well as I did. Unquote. I see what you mean. So that's how we got two new boosters for Parquet Margarine. Yes, once they've tried this delicious spread, folks really appreciate Parquet's fresh, country-sweet flavor. And now that quite a bit more Parquet Margarine is going to your food store, we suggest that you try it, too, at your first opportunity. When you shop tomorrow, look first for Parquet P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine. Made by Kraft. Now let's get back to our story. After a bad night of tossing and twisting, Gildersleeve has come to the conclusion that the only way out of this difficult situation is to face it. And so at four o'clock in the afternoon, wearing his number one dark suit, we find him at Judge Hooker's door after all. Gilday, I thought you weren't coming. I changed my mind. Here's a cake. Cake? What the dickens did you bring a cake for? I thought maybe you could use it. Help out. Well, thank you very much. You didn't need to bring anything. That's all right. It isn't much of a cake. <laughs> is, uh, is Leela here? Yeah, she's here. Come in, come in. I believe you know everybody here. Just throw your hat and coat in the closet, will you, old man? And then come into the parlor and join the merry throng. Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Burbig. And uh, Mrs. Burbig. Uh, I haven't seen you in ages. Uh, well, well, Dr. Pettibone, as I live and breathe. How are you? Uh, Mrs. Pettibone. Uh, you're looking splendid, Mrs. Pettibone. Mrs. Trask, what a beautiful show. And Mrs. Wren and Mrs. Culpepper. How lovely to see you again. Oh, no, I thought you weren't coming. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> Gilday, would you care for a cup of tea? Tea? I never touch the stuff, Judge. Uh, it gives me ideas. Oh, <laughs> Rod Martin, you're terrible. <laughs> Isn't he terrible, Judge? He certainly is. Well, you don't want tea, Gildy. Come over and sit down. Mrs. Pettibone is going to favor us with a song. A song? Yeah. Oh, no. It's rock, Martin. Oh, Mrs. Pettibone will hear you. Uh-huh. My first selection, Fred. My first selection will be one of the doctor's favorites. Just the weary end for you. Oh, 
If I was Doc Pettibone, I'd never come home. Kitchen and got a glass of water. Let me, Leela. Oh, no, no, no. You're the host. I'll be right back. I'll be right back, too, Judge. Billy, you. Rock Martin, what will people say? What do I care? Mrs. Pennybone's a singer. I'm Jack Dempsey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the shame old truck, Martin, aren't you? Yeah. And you're the... What? Nothing. Truck, Martin, would you mind running over to my house with me for a minute? What for? Well, maybe I left the gas on. Do you think you did? Well, maybe I ought to make sure. Yeah, but... What about all those people in there? Do you think they'd notice? Oh, they're all listening to the music. Well, come on. We wouldn't want your house to blow up. (laughs) (laughs) Hey. It's going. Oh, I declare. You build the best fire, Strock, my wife. <laughs> you want to see me make a real big fire? Mm. <clears throat> oh, not another log. You'll burn the house down, Shirley. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, can your husband build fires? Julian Henry. Oh, he's mostly too busy. Besides, he has to be careful of his hands. He's a surgeon, you know. What's that got to do with it? Well, you know, he might get a splinter. Who's afraid of a little splinter? I've got a splinter right there. Had it for a week. Doesn't bother me. Let me see. Uh, Oh, Throckmorton, that's terrible. Nothing. But doesn't it hurt? What do I care? I could kiss it and make it better. Really? Hey, uh, we forgot what we came over here for, Leela. We never looked at the gas. Oh, if it won, we'd smell it. Now, come and sit down. All right. Uh, 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 feels good. Mm, it does feel good, doesn't it? Uh... Am I crowding you? Oh, not at all. In fact, on the contrary. Leela? Yes, Frockmorton. Leela, what are we doing here? Well, why shouldn't we, for goodness sake? But what would Julian Henry say? Oh, he wouldn't care. Yeah, that's a surgeon for you. Oh. Oh, I don't want you to think he isn't jealous, if that's what you mean. Gracious, he's just about the most jealous man I know. Watches me like a cat every minute. But after all, he's off at this medical convention. And there's nothing wrong in just sitting here watching the fire, is there? Two old friends. I went to church last Sunday. Did you? How's Dr. Needham? Dr. Needham? Oh, he's fine. Mm. Uh, Leela, I think I ought to tell you. When I'm with you, I don't feel like just an old friend. Don't you? What do you feel like? (laughs) Hmm. What's wrong, Martin? You're trembling. I shouldn't have come here, Leela. I have no business here. Oh, Throckmorton, what is it? Tell Leela. I can't. I've tried to fight it, Leela. Heaven knows I've tried to fight it. But it was just something bigger than you. You know, then. Oh, it's something bigger than either of us, Throckmorton. I don't think we should fight it another minute. Leela, we better get out of here. Don't go. Please, darling. No, 
darling. Gee, God, this is terrible. Leela, this is, this is wicked. Why? You shouldn't be here with me. You belong to another. What about Julian Henry? What if I were to tell you, Throckmorton, that Julian Henry and I are separated? Separated? You mean it? Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry to hear it. See, that's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so soon, too. <laughs> Leela, was he ever cruel to you? Terribly. Why the... Oh, <laughs> I never did like that guy. I never liked a single thing I ever heard about him. Calls himself a doctor. I'll bet he's... Well, never mind. Have you ever gone back to him? Never. Good. That's why I say, Throckmorton, there's, there's no reason why we shouldn't be perfectly friendly, you and I. <laughs> there you. Make me. <laughs> I'm on spot. <laughs> Bye, George. This is just like old times. Yes, sir. Hey, wait. What? You're still married. Well, I told you, Throckmorton. That doesn't make any difference. Just because you're separated, you're still married. Well, let's not be silly about it. I mean, after all... Silly? That... Leela, I'm as broad-minded as anybody, but no, sir. I'd really better get out of here. Oh, Throckmorton, don't be ridiculous. Leela, what would people say? What would Dr. Needham say? Us sitting here all alone, you married, and me without a chaperone. <laughs> Rock Martin. No, I'd better take you back to the party. Come on, Leela. Rock Martin, will you please listen to me? Well. Now, come and sit down. Well, I'll sit down, but that's all. Rock Martin, I told you Julian Henry and I were separated. Yes. What if I told you we were never married? Well, uh, what? It's true. I couldn't go through with it. I just couldn't go through with it. I couldn't stand his relatives, his mother and his sisters and all. They hated me because they were all as homely as a picket fence, every last one of them. And they just had Julian Henry tied to the apron strings. I felt terrible leaving him at the church like that, but what could I do? Leela, what about you and him coming up here together? I mean, this medical convention. I made that up. It was all a little white lie, Throckmorton. Julian Henry didn't come up with me. I came alone. I was just going to slip into town and sell my house and slip right out again without ever seeing anybody. Not even me? I didn't want to see a soul because I knew what all those old tabby cats around town would be saying. Often a bridesmaid, but never a bride. They'll say Julian Henry walked out on me, but it's not true. I walked out on him. I did. I did. There. I've told you. And I suppose you never speak to me again. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's at the door, Leela. What if they find us here? What if... Wait a minute. Everything's perfectly proper here. Everything's open and above board. What are they talking about? Leela, it couldn't be Julian Henry. Julian Henry wouldn't have the nerve to show his face here. Not after the way he walked. Not after I left him waiting at the church the way I did. Well, in that case. Oh, so, just as I suspected. Leela, I think this calls for some explanation, I must say. Running out like this. After all, you were my guest of honor. I kidnapped the lady, Horace. Have you got anything to say about it? Yes. I consider that your conduct, Gildersleeve, has been that of a bounder. Oh, <laughs> However, I'm here in the role of Mrs. Ransom's legal counsel, not her chaperone. I mean, Mrs. Culpepper. Now, to get down to business, Leela, the time is short. If it's about the house, Judge, it's not for sale. What's that? I say the house is not for sale. Well, I think Leela might have something to say about that. Leela? Whatever Throckmorton says, Horace. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, Leela, you told me only yesterday what... I have your written authorization, your power of attorney. I close the deal with the bank. I you heard the lady, Judge. Anything else you'd like to know? Thank you very much. 
We'll be seeing you soon, no doubt. Watch the step outside. They're a little slippery for old goats. <laughs> I should just like to say this. Good night, Horace, and thanks for everything. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton, you're terrible to Horace. You're terrible to everybody. You're just terrible. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I declare I don't know why I have anything to do with you. Now, come back here and sit down. <laughs> Hard day today. Mm. Say, uh, how's to toss another log on the fire there, Leela, huh? Let's have a little warmth around here. What do you say? All right. Careful not to stain yourself there. <laughs> That's the girl. <coughs> Easy does it. Uh, throw it way in back, Leela. That's the girl. Rockmorton, it's so wonderful to have a man around the house again. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> You'll be hearing from the great Gildersleeve again in just a minute. There's an old saying that money talks, but these days many a homemaker's food bill leaves the impression that money only whispers. Of course, one way to keep your budget in line is to look for only the best values in foods. And that's why we've been suggesting that you look first for delicious, economical parquet margarine when you shop for your family's spread for bread. Among good energy foods, parquet margarine is one of the finest, made of rich, wholesome farm products and fortified with important vitamin A. Yet delicious, country-sweet parquet generally sells for less than half the price of costly spreads. So for a real value and a quality spread for bread, be sure to look first for delicious, economical parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. It's all set, Leela. The judge can get your house back, but it may take a couple of months. Oh, well, I couldn't possibly move up here before spring anyway. Hey, why not? Oh, no, I have to go right back to Savannah. You see, I'm staying with my Auntie Pooh down there. You remember me telling you about my Auntie Pooh, Frost Martin, the one that's so rich. Auntie Pooh? Mm-hmm. She hasn't been at all well this winter, poor old soul. And she's rich as sin, and I just couldn't bear to think of anything happening to her when I wasn't there. <laughs> Well, I suppose we'll have to leave it go at that, then. Now, if your Auntie Pooh will just get a move... Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but hurry back, Leela. You'll be as welcome as the flowers in spring. Won't she, folks? The Great Children's Slave is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Gruden and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Mason. Walter Tetley is Leroy. Shirley Mitchell plays Leela Ransom. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross. And Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peters. It's a treat that's always surefire with the whole family. Ice cream made with Frizz, the new Kraft product. Yes, Frizz makes delicious, velvety smooth ice cream right in your own refrigerator. Real ice cream, rich with plenty of milk and cream. Just add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to directions on the package. Add fruit juice, flavoring, or coffee, four variations from vanilla. Frizz is made by an exclusive process that retains the fresh cream flavor. Ask your grocer for Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z. Six generous servings from one package. <laughs> This is 